In this video, I'm going to walk you through getting started with Code Llama 70B, the latest release from Meta. What's exciting about Code Llama 70B is its performance across a number of benchmarks. First, I'm going to go into some details on the model itself, and then by the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you a handful of ways on how you can access Code Llama 70B. There's one tool in particular I'm excited to show you, which integrates seamlessly with VS Code. So as you might expect, this is the largest and best performing model in the Code Llama family. And there's three ways you can get started with Code Llama. So there's the foundational model, there's a Code Llama version specifically for Python, and then there's a Code Llama instruct model, which is fine-tuned to understand natural language instructions. So if you're looking to integrate this into a chat GPT-like tool, that would be one that you'd consider. Now for Code Llama specifically, this is going to be one where you'd integrate it directly within something like a code editor, like the tool that I'm going to show you by the end of the video. So just like all the other models that Meta has released, Code Llama is free for both research and commercial use, and Code Llama is built on top of Llama 2. It can generate code both from natural language, so where you actually instruct it, like they describe here, write me a function that outputs the Fibonacci sequence, or you can use it with code completion across a number of different programming languages. As it stands today, there are four sizes for Code Llama. There's a 7B model, a 13B model, a 34B model, as well as a 70B model. One of the things that stands out for the 70B model is it's trained on twice the amount of tokens as the original 7B, 13B, and 34B models. So if you have a piece of code that's relatively large that you're looking to refactor, ask questions about, or modify, it will be able to input and output 100,000 tokens of context. The thing that's going to be interesting with this is how well it can generate and make tweaks to particularly large pieces of code. Because users can provide so much context from their code bases, it will be able to generate more relevant code. When you think about coding assistance more broadly, obviously it's helpful if you can have support on a particular function, but it's going to give you much better results if it has the context of that particular file, as well as potentially files that you're importing or leveraging. We're able to have a number of different files and have relevant pieces of code that you're feeding to the LLM. This can be helpful in debugging large code bases. So maybe instead of reading through hundreds of lines of code, you feed it to the LLM if it can identify particular bugs or suggestions, and you might be able to do a comparison on what is generated. And there's some tools that will give you the ability to go line by line and compare and do a diffing. The VS Code plugin that I'm going to show you that integrates with Code Llama 70B will be able to show you the differences. So here's a bit of a lineage chart on how the different models were further trained or fine-tuned. You can see in the Python case that it was further trained on 100 billion tokens and then further fine-tuned on long context of 20 billion tokens. For the Code Llama models, it was further fine-tuned for that longer context. And then finally, for the Instruct model, it was fine-tuned on 5 billion tokens of instructions. To evaluate Code Llama's performance, they used two benchmarks. I'm going to focus mainly on the human eval metric, but they also plotted the mostly basic Python programming metric or the MBPP for the Python developers. For Code Llama Instruct, it does does outperform GPT-4's reported metric. Code Llama does outperform all of the other stated models. They don't have a GPT-4 metric for the MBPP model or the multilingual human eval model. The Code Llama model doesn't quite reach those GPT-4 levels, but it does outperform GPT-3.5. So it's pretty amazing that we now have these open source models that are comparable to these closed source models. By putting these open source models out there, this is going to drive down the cost of some of these models like GPT-3.5 even further, I think. If you're looking for more information, you can go ahead and look into the Code Llama research paper here, where you can go ahead and see some of the specifics on how this model was made. One of the easiest ways to get started is to head on over to labs.perplexity.ai. You can select the Llama 2 sub model from the drop down in the right hand corner here. There's also a handful of models here, like you can see on screen. And so we can just put in our prompt here. So I'll just say, generate me a helicopter game in a single HTML file, write the full HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I'll just go ahead, paste that in here. And we have that chat GPT like experience. It's writing that CSS for us. And then I assume it's going to go ahead and continue on with our JavaScript like we see here. It's a pretty long piece of code that it generated for me from a basic line of text here. If you're looking for a copy and paste solution, this is an option for you. The other nice thing with Perplexity Labs is they do have this model also available from an API. So say if you want to use this model, but you don't want to run it locally, you can go ahead and use a service like this and integrate it within your projects. One thing to note with Perplexity is if you are a pro member, you do also get $5 worth of free credits every single month, which is really great for hobbyists if you're looking to experiment with some of these models. Another great option is Together, if you haven't used them before, they'll give you $25 worth of free credits, at least at time of recording. You can do a ton of stuff on their platform from fine tuning models to using them for inference. And what you can do with this is you can have serverless endpoints that are going to be billed per token. If you want to go in here and try a number of different models, see which one might be best for your use case, and you can easily scale with a service alike Together. If I just go ahead and put in a prompt similar 
similar to what I had. I'll say generate a snake game in a single HTML file. We see that it's going ahead and it's not giving me quite all of that HTML file. It's giving me some of the elements of the JavaScript by the looks of it. But you can see here that it's limiting the response to 512 tokens, where you can just dial that up within the parameters here on the left hand side. Now, I did notice the output length does only go to 2048 within the GUI. I would assume that the inference API would view a larger context window as this model can handle a significantly larger context. The other nice thing is you can just go ahead within their playground, click this button here and get the code for Python, JavaScript, or the curl request where you can go ahead and plug this within your project. Now, the last option I wanted to show you is an open source autopilot for your IDE. Continue is a cross between Cursor, which is an AI first code editor and GitHub Copilot. So I have videos on both of those, which you can check out if you're interested. Now, I'm not going to be doing a deep dive on continue within this video, but if you get started with continue, you could simply go to VS Code, go to the extension marketplace or their website, and you can go ahead and install it there. Here, you're able to see that you have Code Llama, GPT-4, as well as a number of different models that you can interact with. So as you see in their example here, you can go ahead and select a piece of code. You can ask questions about it, or you can ask it to be tweaked. And if I just demonstrate it here, so I just copied over that helicopter game from Perplexity Labs. And if I just go ahead and highlight, let's say some of the CS, you have the option that pops up here. So it says Command M to select code or Command Shift L to edit. So let's say I'll edit and I'll say, make this more colorful. And you can see that line by line, it's gonna go ahead and add in some different colors. So it's giving a new background color. It's giving you the color of the foreground. You can go ahead and click the accept or reject buttons, or you can go ahead and accept them all. So here there's a number of different options. So there's Code Llama 70B, there's GPT-4 Vision, there's GPT-4. Once you select a piece of code, you have the option to put it within the context window of the chat view here, or you can go ahead and specify the edits that you want to make right in line. So if I Command Shift L, I can write what I want to have happen and I can say simplify this. You can see line by line, it's going to go ahead and make a recommendation on what you can do. So in this case, it's saying maybe I can simplify it by removing this class name and you can go ahead and accept it. So you can command shift enter or you can reject. I just wanted to give you a quick demonstration on continue and you can play around with it further. If you'd like, leave a comment if you found it useful. That's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.